Okay, get ready. Because we are diving deep into stoic wisdom today with like the Marcus Aurelius. Oh, yeah. Emperor of Rome. Philosopher oh, and journaler, and apparently a really good journaler. Yeah, his meditations, right? They weren't like meant to be a self help book, right? Like, here's how to live your best life. They were his own personal thoughts, yeah, struggles, you know, just trying to figure things out, like yeah. leadership, mm. life, you know, the whole shebang. Yeah, it's like we're getting a peek into like the private journal of a Roman emperor, which I think is so cool. And the thing is, it's like so relatable, yeah, like centuries later people are still reading this using it yeah i feel like everyone from like ceos to you know athletes are quoting marcus aurelius these days it's true it's true that's why and i think it's because it's timeless you right, know right, it's right. tapping into those universal human experiences i mean yeah he was an emperor but he still dealt with a lot of the same things we do oh for sure for sure like whether you're you know leading an empire or just trying to like not freak out every day mm -hmm. Aurelius has got some good stuff in there for you. Exactly. So, like, where do we even begin with someone like Marcus Aurelius? So much to unpack there. Okay, so let's start with, like, one of the core principles of Stoicism. Okay. This is a big one. Mastering your own mind. Ooh, I like that. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, Aurelius, he believed that we are not in control of everything that happens to us. True. But we are in control of how we react to it. 100%. I think we can all relate to that a little bit, right? Yeah. Life throws curveballs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All the time. And that's where Aurelius' wisdom comes in. Okay. Lay it on me. He said, and I quote, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. Ooh, that's good. Right. Yeah. Isn't that empowering? It is, because it's so easy to feel like, oh, like, everything is happening to me. You know, like, I'm just, like at the whim of everything else going on. But he's saying like, no, you have a choice. You have the power to choose how you respond. You have a choice in how you're gonna let these things affect you. Yes. And that is true freedom. Not trying to control the world around you, yeah. but mastering that inner world. And the thing is, this wasn't just like a theory for him. Right. This was his life. Like as the emperor of Rome, can you imagine? Yeah, the weight of the world on his shoulders. That is literally. Oh, yeah. And yet he's like, no, I need to like master myself. Yeah. I need to focus on these internal battles. I need to make sure that I am like living in accordance with these principles. Yeah. And it wasn't just philosophical, it was personal. He said, waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. Ooh. Right. Mic drop. It's a call to action. Yes. It's like enough talking about it. Just be about it. Live it. Yes. I love that. Like, it's it's so easy to get caught up in, like, you know, thinking about self-improvement and all that. But he's like, no, no, embody it. Like, actually do it. Exactly. Action speaks louder than words. Yeah. He also said, let men see. Let them know a real man who lives as he was meant to live. Like, live authentically. Live in line with those values. Yeah. Even when it's tough. Ugh, so good. Okay, can we talk about his advice on dealing with difficult people? Oh, yeah. Because, let's be real, we all have them. Everyone's got them. Co-worker, family member, that person on the internet who just, like, leaves nasty comments everywhere. Oh, yeah, we've all encountered that person. Learning to deal with those people, those relationships, it's hard. It can be so hard, and it's nothing new. Even back in ancient Rome. Really? Aurelius had some thoughts on this. I bet he did. I bet he did. Remarkable strategies for dealing with these, like, very human situations. Like, one of the things that I find so fascinating about Aurelius, right, is that he's like, don't let them drag you down. Don't let who drag you down? Yep. The other people. Yeah. The difficult people. Okay, yeah. He reminds us that, like, people are often acting out of their own pain, their own ignorance. That's a really good point. Because it's so easy to just be like, ugh. This person is the worst. Right. But like, if you can take a step back and be like, okay, maybe they're going through something. Maybe they haven't learned a better way. Yeah. You know, and it's not to excuse bad behavior. Right. But it's just like, okay, I'm going to choose how I respond to this. And that's where our power is, right? Yeah. Yeah. We can't control them, but we can control how we react. Totally. And sometimes the best revenge is like just rising above it. Ooh, he had a quote about that, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Like the best revenge is being better or something like that. The best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injury. Yes. That's yeah. the one. Okay, so good. You're not going to stoop to their level. No. You're going to take the high road. Yes. I like that. Okay. So we've talked about mastering our minds, dealing with difficult people. What else did Marcus Aurelius have for us? 
Okay, so in today's world, right, where it's so easy to get caught up in like the more, more, more. Oh, yes. The rat race. Uh, the rat race. I think his ideas on contentment are so relevant. Mm. Imagine being the emperor of Rome. Right. And still being like, am I happy? Am I fulfilled? If anyone had an excuse to be chasing, you know, all the external validation, yeah, it would be a Roman emperor. Right. And he's like, no, it comes from within. Okay, I love that. He says, do not indulge in dreams of having what you have not, but reckon up the chief of the blessings you do possess, and then thankfully remember how you would crave for them if they were not yours. Okay, wow. It's like a gratitude practice. It is. It's just like stop and be like, what do I already have? Yeah, that you're grateful for. Yeah, my health, my family. The little things. You know, like a good cup of coffee. Yeah. Like sometimes it's easy to forget about that stuff. Totally. Yeah. He says, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself in your way of thinking. So much wisdom. <laughs> okay. Speaking of things that are like easier said than done, Aurelius also had some like really interesting things to say about fear. Oh yeah. Which let's be real, like we all experience fear. Of course. It's human. It's a natural human emotion. Totally. And I mean, even Aurelius as emperor had to deal with fear. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Wars, political turmoil, even a plague. Oh gosh. Yeah. So he knew a thing or two about fear. <laughs> he did. But it was all about not letting it control us. Okay. So how do we do that? Did he have any tips? Okay. Yeah. So how do we do that? Did he have any tips? He did. One of my favorites. Never let the future disturb you. You will need it, if you have to, with the same weapons of reason which today arm you against the present. Snaps. Right. So good. Like, we get so caught up worrying about stuff that might not even happen. Right. And, like, even if it does happen, yeah. we'll deal with it. You'll have the same strength the same resilience that you have right now, today. It's so easy to get caught in that trap though. Like, oh my gosh, what if this happens? What if that happens? Our brains are really good at going to those worst case scenarios. The worst. Right. But Aurelius understood that. Yeah. And he wasn't saying ignore your fears. Okay, good. It's more like confront them. Okay, yeah. With reason, with courage. He had this great analogy. The art of living is more like wrestling than dancing because an artful life requires being prepared to meet and withstand sudden and unexpected attacks. Ooh, I like that a lot. Yeah. Because it's true. You know, for a guy who lived so long ago, he really gets it. He gets it. Like life does throw those punches. It does, it does. And it's about like how we roll with it, how we adapt. Exactly. That brings us to another important theme for Aurelius interconnectedness. Okay, yeah. He recognized that we are all part of something so much bigger than ourselves. Totally. Our actions have ripple effects. Yeah. They impact not just us, but the people around us. Absolutely. He talks about that a lot with being emperor, right? Oh, yeah. His decisions, not just affecting him. Affecting everyone, the whole Roman Empire. Right. Right. And maybe we aren't emperors, but right. we all have that. We have our own little empires. Our families. Yeah. Our communities, our workplaces. It's true. What we do matters. Yeah. He uses a great metaphor to get this across, he says. That which isn't good for the hive isn't good for the bee. Ooh, I like that. Right. Yeah, we're all connected. Recognizing our shared humanity. Yeah. Understanding that what's good for the whole is good for us as individuals. Ugh, in a world that feels so divided right now, I feel like that message is so important. So important. Just like remembering that we are all connected. It's a good thing to be reminded of. Okay, before we wrap up this deep dive, I have to bring up that passage on prayer. Oh, yes. It's like so unexpected, but so good. It's amazing. Yeah. Like it totally changed how I think about prayer. Same. Instead of, you know, asking for stuff, Aurelius is like, ask for a shift in perspective. Yeah. And he gives this example, instead of a way to not lose my child, try asking for a way to lose my fear of it. Isn't that like mind-blowing? It is mind-blowing. It's about cultivating that inner strength, that resilience. Like, no matter what happens, I got this. Yes. Yeah. And I think that is, like, one of the most powerful takeaways from Marcus Aurelius. We have a choice in how we respond. Yes, 100%. Yeah. We can choose courage over fear. We can choose wisdom over ignorance. Compassion over judgment. Yes, all of that. And it's like those choices, those little internal shifts, those are the things that really make a difference. In our own lives and in the world. So anyone listening out there who's feeling a little lost, overwhelmed, yeah. just needs some ancient wisdom for the modern world. It's out there. Remember, you got this. You have the power. You have the power to choose your response. Yes. And you're not alone. 
mm -hmm. not alone. <laughs> and like as Marcus Aurelius reminds us, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. Mic drop. Until next time. Yeah. Gotta keep my head high, staying in control Stoicism the way I'm keeping peace within my soul Embracing the struggle, finding strength in adversity Determined to rise, ain't nothing stopping me I'm a true soldier, never backing down, backing down Resilience in my bones, I wear the stoic crown Silent strength is my weapon, no need to make a sound Unrivaled in my persistence, I'll always hold my ground, hold my ground. I wake up in the morning, feel the sun on my face Grateful for life, it's a precious embrace Marcus said, think of the privilege to be alive Breathe it in, let the gratitude thrive Power over my mind, not the outside scene In the chaos of life, find the strength within So it was in my thoughts like a guiding light Running with the stars in the cosmic fight I'm a true soldier, never backing down, backing down Resilience in my bones, I wear the stoic crown Marcus said everything we hear is opinion Not a fact, it's a perspective dominion Waste no time arguing about what's good and right Be the change, be the beacon Shine the light, anger's consequences More grievous than the cause Best revenge, rise above, break unjust laws Be like those who bring the pain Stoic soul, immune to the toxic rain I'm a true soldier, never backing down, backing down Resilience in my bones, I wear the stoic crown Strength is my weapon, no need to make a sound Unrivaled in my persistence, I'll always hold my ground, hold my ground. Except the fear defines love with all your heart In the journey of life, play your part uh -huh. Soul died with the color of thought profound Marcus Aurelius wisdom echoing the sound Opinions ain't facts, perspective ain't true Stoic virtue unshakable from the roots Yeah, Be a good man, no need to debate Actions speak louder, let your character translate Fate brings us together, love with full measure In the symphony of life, find your own treasure Marcus said, the soul becomes what it thinks So we grab carving out mental links Marcus Elias, drop the truth in the booth Stoic rap spreading wisdom, that's the truth Yeah, In the echoes of ancient philosophy I find my strength, my own autonomy Dwell on the beauty, watch the stars align Stoic mindset washing away the grind yeah. Happiness depends on the thoughts we mold In the tapestry of life, let the story be bold I'm a true soldier, never backing down, backing down. Resilience in my bones, I wear the stoic crown Silent strength is my weapon, no need to make a sound Unrivaled in my persistence, I'll always hold my ground, hold my ground help you to do anything that you do better like I'm not going to be able to give you a gift that you don't have but what I will be able to do is help you today operate in a way you've never operated before right I will I will help you to operate in a way you've never operated before I, I'm gonna help you to do some things that you've never done in your life before and as a result you're gonna be able to go to a whole new level so this is, we have to start here we have to start here just, just write down those, 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 those things. One or two or three things that that you have to desperately get done before this year ends. It's, it's, it's desperation. You, it's, I don't have a choice. I don't have an option. You got to get that done. Got it. Like I just want you. We're not. We're, and I'm not talking about stuff that's kind of important. I'm talking about the stuff that that has got it. The ball's dropping, and you can't keep talking about it. Like you will not be able to rest you didn't get this done I want you to write that down I want you to write that that's where we're starting I want you to write that down ET like I gotta get this done E like E it's no this is no option this is not like a vacation this is not you know just making a couple more dollars for the sake of buying a car a house like E this is some life and death stuff E like this is some change the trajectory of my life stuff E this is like this is like it's gonna put me in a place like where I'm just gonna be able to get to that that place that I've been trying to get to. I want you to write that down. And it was, look guys, I'm being honest. It was like random. 
It was like just totally random. It was out of nowhere. It was a, a, the Christmas holiday. And Carl, our videographer, had his family over. And we live around, at that time, we lived around the corner from each other. Now we live on the same block. Random, right? Christmas was over. We just going to the house, just eating dinner. It, it, it just was a random, a random night. And somehow we got to talking and Carl's wife is from Barbados and she didn't have citizenship. It is the first responsibility of every citizen to question authority. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. Acta non verba, deeds not words, Latin proverb. Choose a job you love, and you will never have to work a day in your life. Love people, not things. Use things, not people. What you think you are is not what you are, Alan Watts. On Providence. When you make any charge against Providence, consider and you will learn that the thing has happened according to reason. Yes, but the unjust man has the advantage. In what? In money. Yes, for he is superior to you in this, that he flatters, is free from shame, and is watchful. What is the wonder? But see if he has the advantage over you in being faithful, in being modest, for you will not find it to be so. But wherein you are superior, there you will find that you have the advantage. And I once said to a man who was vexed because Philostorgus was fortunate, would you choose to lie with Sura? May it never happen, he replied, that this day should come. Why then are you vexed if he receives something in return for that which he sells? Or how can you consider him happy who acquires those things by such means as you abominate? Or what wrong does providence if he gives the better things to the better men? Is it not better to be modest than to be rich? He admitted this. Why are you vexed then, man, when you possess the better thing? Remember then always and have in readiness the truth that this is a law of nature, that the superior has an advantage over the inferior in that in which he is superior, and you will never be vexed. But my wife treats me badly. Well, if any man asks you what this is, say, my wife treats me badly. Is there then nothing more nothing my father gives me nothing but to say that this is an evil is something which must be added to it externally and falsely added for this reason we must not get rid of poverty but of the opinion about poverty and then we shall be happy all disciplines affect each other every lack affects the rest every new affects the rest the key is to diminish the lack and set up the new, and you've started a whole new life process. Also, one more thought on discipline. Here's the greatest value of discipline. Self-worth, self-esteem. People are teaching self-esteem these days, but they don't connect it to his. The least lack of discipline, and it starts to erode our psyche. One of the greatest temptations is to just ease up a little bit. The slightest lack of doing your best starts to erode. It's like, instead of doing your best, doing just a little less than your best. Sure enough. You say, well, it's just going to affect my sales. No, it's going to affect your consciousness. It's going to affect your philosophy. Now you've begun in the slightest way to affect your own philosophy. I got better day by day and week by week and month by month. And I'm asking you to do the same thing until you can develop a long arm and a long reach until you can develop influence that won't quit. Touch people next year you couldn't touch this year. Touch people now you couldn't touch before. Conduct a meeting now you couldn't conduct before. Heart and soul now mixed in there that wasn't there, missing before. I'm asking all of you to get better in spite of the winters, in spite of the downturns, the money downturn, the social downturn, the personal downturn, whatever it is.
Blessed are those who do not fear solitude, who are not afraid of their own company, who are not always desperately looking for something to do, something to amuse themselves with, something to judge. Strong people are always simple. One who is unaffected by the pain and pleasure that arise from contact with the senses and who is steady in both is said to be one who has attained self-realization. Bhagavad Gita You've got to do what's right for you, even if it hurts some people you love. Never attribute to malice that which can be adequately explained by stupidity. Leadership is not about being in charge. It is about taking care of those in your charge. Jocko Willink Setting therefore before thine eyes this happiness and felicity of thy mind, whereby it is able to pass through all things and is capable of all motions, whether as the fire upwards or as the stone downwards, or as the cylindrus through that which is sloping, content thyself with it and seek not after any other thing. For all other kind of hindrances that are not hindrances of thy mind, either they are proper to the body or merely proceed from the opinion, reason not making that resistance that it should, but basely and cowardly suffering itself to be foiled, and of themselves can neither wound nor do any hurt at all. Else must he of necessity, whosoever he be that meets with any of them, become worse than he was before. For so is it in all other subjects, that that is thought hurtful unto them, whereby they are made worse. But here contrariwise man, if he make that good use of them that he should, is rather the better and the more praiseworthy for any of those kind of hindrances than otherwise. But generally remember that nothing can hurt a natural citizen that is not hurtful unto the city itself, nor anything hurt the city that is not hurtful unto the law itself. But none of these casualties or external hindrances do hurt the law itself, or are contrary to that course of justice and equity by which public societies are maintained. Neither therefore do they hurt either city or citizen. on the jobs that's available. You know why? Because they don't want to do those jobs. They want and are looking for something that's them. That's what's happening with the majority of people. They're reflecting on their lives and they're asking themselves, does this work for me? Is this me? And if the answer is no, then do you. Don't die an unlived life. Take a chance on you.